Hi, welcome to Storytime in the Book Nook with Squirrel and I. We have books on pumpkins today. So click on those listening ears. Use those scientist eyes and settle in. Hopefully you can stay for all of them. Here we go. The first one, apples and pumpkins. Apples and pumpkins. When red and yellow leaves are on the trees, we go up to Comstock Farm to pick apples and pumpkins. That sounds fun. Mr. Comstock gives us a bushel basket to put our apples in. Geese and chickens and a big fat turkey walk with us on our way to the orchard where the apples grow. My father picked apples, my mother does too, and I climb up a little apple tree and I pick the reddest apple of all. When our basket is full of red and shiny apples, we go to the field where the pumpkins grow. I look and look until I find the best pumpkins of them all. My father cuts it from the vine. I carry it back to the car. At home, we carve a jack-o'-lantern face on our big orange pumpkin and we put a candle inside to light it. Now our pumpkin looks scary and funny too. On Halloween night, we put our pumpkin on the doorstep and my mother gives away lots of red and shiny apples for trick or treat. While I go trick or treating up and down our street. The end. Apples and pumpkins. I like that one. Didn't you, squirrel? What? Oh, you did? Squirrel liked that one. The next one is By the Light of the Harvest Moon. This one's beautiful. Pay close attention to the gorgeous illustrations. By the Light of the Harvest Moon. The Harvest Moon shines tonight. Everyone is still at work on Apple Hill Farm. The corn is ripe since late, late summer, and the men and boys carry the last of it in burlap bags to the corn crib. Around midnight, our one weary farmer crosses the road and walks slowly towards his house. He will try to sleep. Though the harvest moon shines really bright. Look at that up in the sky. The cows and the sheep stand very still. They stare up to the orange yellow ball, which floats at the bottom of the sky like a big round balloon. The animals talk to the moon, but she does not answer their low moos and high pitched baas. Pretty. The wind speaks softly at first, then louder, swish, swish. She delivers gusts of blast of air over the fields and farmhouses. Orange, yellow, and crimson leaves swirl and twirl and dance in the sky until... What do you think is going to happen? Should we turn the page? A cloud of leaves settles in on the pumpkin patch. When the gusts, gusts subside, leaf people emerge from the pile. Oh, how cool is that? 
First come grown-ups, then come children, and then pets. Look at that. How fun. The leaf people find a clearing and begin decorating tables with maple leaf placemats, golden mums, and pumpkin centerpieces. Shh! Hurry before the children return, says a mother in a red dress. While the grown-ups prepare, the children play on a nearby hillside. They bob for apples, juggle acorns, string popcorn necklaces, and weave wreaths of gold and rust-colored leaves. That looks like a lot of fun, doesn't it? The best game of all is stacking pumpkins. One boy says, I can stack six pumpkins. I can stack ten, boasts another. Watch that it doesn't topple over, warns a child. Too late, all the pumpkins roll down, down, down the hill. Uh-oh. Catch them, stop them, the children shout. They chase the runaway pumpkins down, down the hill, right into the middle of... Let's see. A party, a dessert party. Surprise, sings the mother and father, aunts and uncles, grandmas and grandpas. Look at that, yum. Can you see that page? This one's a very long book. <laughs> it's hard to see the pages. A grandma gathers the children around. Today is the um, equinox. The hours of daylight and darkness are equal and fall begins. Fruits, vegetables, and grains are harvested. Leaves turn the colors of jewels. And we get to eat pie! They look very excited. Everyone laughs. Then they feast on the sweetest treats from the fall harvest. Pumpkin, apple, Pear and pecan pies, yum, yum. Under the light of the moon, a daddy raises his glass of cider and toasts to the new season. When the last bite of pie is eaten, the leaf people pack everything up, join hands, and they say, and wait, hold on, children, there's still fun to be had. what they're gonna do. The moon closes its eyes and goes to sleep, but the wind awakens from its slumber and delivers gusts of blasts of air. Swish, swish. The wind blows the leaf people out of the clearing, out of the pumpkin patch, and into the crisp moonlight, moonlit night. One of my favorite pages. Magic. Pure magic. The next morning, the sun shines on Apple Hill Farm, and the farmer is in the farmhouse. The cows and sheep are in the barn. The leaves are in the pumpkin patch. Everything is in its place. If you look carefully, you will know the leaf people were there. The end. And a wonderful past librarian who is very special to the library, Renee Jensen. She donated that book. One of my favorite fall books, By the Light of the Harvest Moon. Thank you, Renee. The next one is called Sophie's Squash. That's Sophie. Sophie's Squash. <laughs> I like this page. Very happy, Sophie. And let's find out why. One bright fall day, Sophie chose a squash at the farmer's market. Her parents planned to serve it for supper, but Sophie had other ideas.
It was just the right size to hold in her arms, just the right size to bounce on her knee, just the right size to love. I'm glad we met, with, Sophie whispered. Good friends are hard to find. <laughs> like her pigtails. At home, Sophie used markers to give her squash a face. Then she wrapped it in a blanket and rocked it to sleep. Silly Sophie. When it was time to make supper, Sophie's mother looked at the squash. She looked at Sophie. I call her Bernice, Sophie said. I'll call for a pizza, said her mom. After that, Bernice went everywhere with Sophie to story time at the library, good choice, to visit other squash at the farmer's market, to practice somersaults. Look at that. They have fun together. Every night, Sophie gave Bernice a bottle, a hug, and a kiss. Well, we did hope she'd love vegetables, said Sophie's mother. Shh, Bernice is sleeping. There. Sweet pea, Sophie's mother said one morning as she was making blueberry waffles, Bernice is a squash, not a friend. If we don't eat her soon, she'll get mushy and gross. Let's bake her with marshmallows. Would that be yummy? Don't listen, Bernice, Sophie cried. That afternoon, Sophie's father took her shopping. Sugar beet, he said, Bernice is a squash. Why don't you just pick a nice toy to play with instead? But the trucks were too hard and the dolls were too soft and Sophie clutched Bernice tightly. No, thank you, I have everything I need. After supper, supper, Sophie's parents called a family meeting. Bernice napped in Sophie's lap. Why don't we donate Bernice to the food pantry before she rots? Bernice seemed a little blotchy, said Sophie's dad on the way to the library one day. She looks perfect to me, said Sophie. At story time, some of the kids pointed and stared. What's that spotty thing, a boy asked. Well, her name is Bernice and she's a squash with freckles. Maybe Bernice should stay at home next time, Sophie, Sophie's mom suggested. Well, why? She wasn't the one being rude. See, she's still holding Bernice. Still, as winter neared, Sophie noticed changes. Bernice seemed softer and her somersaults lacked their usual style. Visiting friends will cheer you up, Sophie said. At the farmer's market, squash were everywhere. Firm, shiny squash. What keeps a squash healthy, Sophie asked a farmer. It's simple, really. Fresh air, good clean dirt, and a little love. Well, Sophie thought, I have all that. At home, Sophie cleared leaves from Bernice's favorite spot. She made a bed of soft soil, tucked Bernice in, and kissed her goodnight. Get better soon, she whispered. That night, while Sophie slept, the wind whistled and tiny snowflakes fell. When she woke, the world was covered in white. Do you think Bernice is cold out there, Sophie asked. I'm sure she's warm and cozy under her snow blanket. Sophie gazed out the window all morning. She was still there in the afternoon when her father came home with a surprise. You need a new friend, he said. Ace was nice. Meet Ace. Ace was nice but boring. He just swam around and around in a bowl. But during the long winter, Sophie discovered that Ace was a superb silent reader who did fabulous flip turns, and he always listened politely when she talked about Bernice. Bernice was great at keeping secrets, she said.
When the snow finally ended, Sophie rushed into the garden. The only thing there was a small green sprout. It looked strangely familiar. Right there. Bernice, Sophie said, how was your winter? After that, Sophie, Ace, and Bernice ate lunch together every day. One bright summer morning, Sophie somersaulted across the yard, landed by the garden, and stared in disbelief. What do you think? Wow, Bernice had grown two tiny squash. You look just like your mom, she said. Soon, Bonnie and Baxter were just the right size for Sophie to hold in her arms and bounce on her knee. Just the right size to love. The end. Sophie's squash. Wasn't that a fun one? Squirrel, should we do our last one today? You want to hold it up? It's really cool. Pumpkin eye. Pumpkin eye. Yellow moon rising soon. Piece of pie, pumpkin eye. I like this page. Candlesticks, burning wicks. Trick or treat, pounding feet, jack-o'-lanterns line the street. Down the hill, spirits spill. Ooh, look at the moon. Purple scales, dragon tails, twisted horns and unicorns. Everybody dressing up. Trick or treat, pounding feet, eerie shadows fill the street. Wow! <laughs> Swooping bats, hissing cats. It's a funny page. Little one. Tattered rags, toothless hags, pointed tails, and blood red nails. Wow. Trick or treat, pounding feet, wretched witches roam the street. Is that a hat? Can you see it in the light? There we go. It's better light. Clacking bones, clacking bones, muffled moans. Look at the dog's face. He's smiling too, the skeleton. That's funny. Tigers growl and werewolves howl. Toes curl, heads swirl, things bump, hearts thump. Trick or treat, pounding feet, Halloween has found our street. Pumpkin eye. Thanks again for joining us. Do you want to say bye to Squirrel? Bye. Have a really good week. We'll see you.